Okay, let's take a look at question 2.2, which is a geometric sequence. So let's just jump right into it. It says, given a geometric sequence, 36, negative 18, 9, etc. 2.2.1 says, determine the value of R, the common ratio. Okay, so you must remember that to get from term 1 to term 2, we multiply by something. And term 3 to term 4, or term 2 to term 3, we multiply by the same thing. So R is equal to term 2 divided by term 1, which is negative 18 divided by 36, which is negative 1 half. Okay. Next, it says, calculate n if tn is equal to 9 divided by 4096. Okay, so first thing you need to do is get an expression for tn. So remember, in your geometric sequences, you have a multiplied by the ratio to the power of n minus 1. So in this instance, a, which is our first term, is 36, multiplied by our ratio, which was negative 1 half, to the power of n minus 1. So now, we're trying to find that n. So we make this equal to the sum that we've been given. So 9 divided by 4096 is equal to 36 multiplied by negative a half to the power of n minus 1. Okay. So now, to try and isolate this exponent of n minus 1, I'm going to divide both sides by 36. So 9 divided by 4096 divided by 36 gives me 1 over 16,384. Okay, which is a big denominator. But <clears throat> the right-hand side is still negative a half to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so now, guys, I know that you would normally say if you have y is equal to base to the power of the exponent, you would say that x is equal to log base y. Okay. In this instance, because our base is negative, you're going to get an undefined because using a negative base with a log is not going to work. So now you need to try and think in terms of your exponent laws. Okay. So what are the odds of this entire thing on this side being able to be expressed in terms of the base of negative a half. So this is where a bit of trial and error comes in. So if I say negative a half, negative 0.5 to the power of, this looks like a really big number. If I say two to the power of five is 32, then this looks like it could be two to the power of, I don't know, maybe somewhere like 12, okay? Okay, so this here, this 4096 over here is 2 to the power of 12. So we're getting closer. We need to express this number as 2 to the power of something. So if I say negative of half to the power of, let's say, 14. Look at that. It's, it's exactly the same number here. So I know that this left-hand side is negative of half to the power of 14. Okay, and that's equal to negative a half to the power of n minus 1. So now that I've expressed both of these things in terms of the same base, if negative a half raised to the power of 14 is equal to negative a half raised to the power of n minus 1, that means that 14 is equal to n minus 1, and therefore n is equal to 15. Okay, so remember guys, if you have a negative base like the one we had here, you can't use this log situation. You need to try and express in terms of exponents and the same base. Okay, so now it says calculate the sum to infinity of this. Okay, so remember, sum to infinity is given to us as a over 1 minus r. And this is on your formula sheet, guys, so you don't need to memorize that. So a we know was 36 and r is negative a half. So easy peasy, you just substitute that in. 36 divided by 1 minus negative a half, which is going to give us 36 over 3 divided by 2. I can easily tip in times. 3 goes into itself once and into 36 12 times, so we get 12 times 2, which is 24. Obviously, you guys could have just plugged this whole thing into your calculator, 
But mental maths, guys, very important sometimes. And lastly, it says, okay, this is a whopper of a question. Calculate the value of this whole expression. So the first thing that you need to notice is this is term one, term three, term five, which means that all of these guys here are odd numbered, okay? And everyone in the denominator is even numbered. So here we can see that we're going up to 500. So guys, does it make sense that if I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 500, half of them are going to be in the numerator and half of them are going to be in the denominator. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So that means that n is equal to 250. Okay, so that's the first thing. There are a number of ways that you can deal with this thing. I'm going to say that the numerator is its own sequence. So we have, in the numerator, we have the odd terms, okay? And I'm going to treat them as their own sequences. So I'm going to say in the odd one, the first term, if we look at our original pattern, guys, remember, which was this thing. We have 36, negative 18, 9. Okay, so term 1 here is 36. Term 2 was negative 18. Term 3 is 9. Term 4 would be 9 divided by negative 2, which is negative 9 over 2. Term 5, if we keep with the pattern, is 9 over 4. And term 6 is negative 9 over 8. Okay, so you see that they form their own patterns. These are the odd ones, and these are the even ones. So for the odd, the first term is equal to 36. The ratio between the odd numbered ones here we're timesing by 1 over 4 this time because we're skipping a term. We're going from term 1, we're skipping 2, and we're going to term 3. So remember, there was a ratio of negative a half here, twice. So in between these, it's 1 over 4. Same as in the denominators. Okay, so r is equal to 1 over 4. So now we can say... Oh, and also n is equal to 250, okay? So the sum of the odd terms, remember there are 250 of them. Remember, Sn is given to us as a into r to the power of n minus 1 all over r minus 1. So S of 250 for the odd valued terms is equal to a, which is 36, multiplied by r, which is a quarter, to the power of n, which is 250, so let me put this in its own bracket, minus 1, all over a quarter minus 1. Okay, so that's going to give us this whole sum here in the numerator. So if I get my calculator up, I'm going to have 36 into um, a quarter to the power of 250, minus 1, all over, again, a quarter, minus 1, and that is going to give me 48. Okay, so this entire numerator is 48. Now, if I do the same thing for the even terms, which are the denominator's terms, a is equal to, remember now we're starting at t2, so a is equal to negative 18. And that goes into a quarter to the power of 250 because remember half of the 500 terms are also in the denominator, divided by a quarter minus 1. And that is going to give us, well if you see it's pretty much the same equation just that a has changed. So I'm going to delete that 36 and put in negative 18 and I'm going to get negative 24. So that is the denominator. So now the sum that we're trying to find is simply the numerator over the denominator. So 
term 1 plus term 3 plus term 5, etc. All over term 2 plus term 4 plus term 6, etc. is equal to 48 divided by negative 24, which gives us negative 2. Okay, so guys, whenever you get a combined sequence like this, try and look at what you're getting. So it, in this instance, we had a fraction. So the numerator formed its own sequence. We separated it off into the odd terms. The denominator, we separated off into the even terms. Work with them separately, find their own sums, and then you have a simple fraction that you just need to simplify. Okay.